It's our announcement, guys. Check it out. This is what we have been working on for several months now, and we can finally say we are very, 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 very close to getting our official license to be resource parents, which is the more updated term, but to be yeah. foster care parents. Yes, we are right here at the finish line. Haven't quite crossed the finish line yet, but we're, yeah. we're right there and there's no reason we shouldn't. Um, and so, yeah, any moment now will be the running through the little, the ribbon, you know? Yeah. Like if we get our license before this video is live, we'll probably have a pinned comment. But if not, mm -hmm. we're literally going to get it within a day of two, a day or two of this video going live. Mm -hmm. uh, we just, we're holding on to this for so long and we're like, you know what? I'm so tired of holding on to it. Let's finally just talk about it. I know. Uh, because there's a lot to talk about and we're just very excited to share this with you, with you and then talk about how we feel in the process and everything. Mm -hmm. But firstly, look where we are. We're in the nursery. <laughs> we're on the ground mm -hmm. in the nursery too. We found these really cool meditation chairs. Yeah. Our assistant had one and she was like, you should use this for your picnic because yeah. we did a picnic the other day. And they're so perfect for sitting on the ground. We just use the portable Hoyer, mm -hmm. lower me down like a sack of flour, and then I just end up chilling in the chair. Yeah, the sack of flour, that's that's a bit... <laughs> that was... No, not a sack of flour. Lowering you down like a human being. Um, like a human. No, it, it's actually great. So we decided it'd be really fun and cozy to film on the floor of the nursery. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting on this very cute, like carpet, like a round circular carpet that's like a, a sun pretty much. Put stuff on the walls, the cribs behind us. Yes. Here's a chair, which actually goes on the other side, but I thought it'd be really cute to have it in the video, so I moved it. Um, <laughs> no, I, I really, I really love everything. I'm so excited. No. We're gonna do an official room tour in another video. Yeah, but this came together so well. We'll show you more about all the things that Charisma built. <laughs> Charisma is assembled. like a, a carpenter. No, 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 I did not build any of this from scratch. I assembled <laughs> from Ikea. Well, she worked very hard and it, and it looks so good in here. Thank you. And it deserves a child. Yeah. This space deserves a child. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the process. When we started it. Yeah. Why we chose to go down foster, the foster care route. Yeah. Let's start from the beginning. The beginning started with fertility treatments. Yes. And we were pretty deep in the fertility treatment process, mm -hmm. but still like in the, in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. When we decided to begin the foster care process, which yeah. starts just with an application, mm -hmm. we knew that it would be time consuming. We knew it would take a long time and we knew it was something we wanted. Mm -hmm. um, we both have talked a lot about, you know, bio kids being one thing and fostering being another thing. And this is something um, that we want in the picture. Yeah. So we started the process while working towards bio children. Yes. So while, go while going through IVF, we just had a long conversation mm -hmm. about lots of long conversations yes about if foster care is something that we wanted to do because it is not something that you just jump into mm -hmm. i think everyone should do it personally i think it's great to have families and people that truly care about children bring these children into a safe comfortable loving environment when who knows mm -hmm. where they're coming from and i think it's important to have more resource parents but oh, yeah. It's a long conversation that you have to have. You have to know why you're doing it. And even through this process, talking to the social worker, they asked us so many times, why are you doing this? Like, where's yeah. your heart? And, and so you really need to truly know where you stand. And mm -hmm. at first, I would say you maybe were a little bit more hesitant than I was. Well, it's something that you've always considered. Mm -hmm. And I only began considering by seeing your heart be so open to it. Yeah. I use you as my barometer in a lot of ways mm -hmm. because you're amazing and I want to be like you. So, oh my so gosh. I was like, yeah, <laughs> wow. Oh, um, babe. <laughs> oh, babe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened. It's a, it, yeah. I think there's a, a lot of emotions tied, tied in all of this. Mm -hmm. Why am I crying? I don't know. It's a, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's okay. Do you want me to keep talking? Yeah. You want to wait? We're going to cut for just a moment here. <laughs> oh, that was weird. It's okay. Anyway. We're, I don't even know what you're about to say. I don't know either. <laughs> it's just, um... Mm. You don't have to apologize, babe. It's okay. Blink away. It's okay. Do you want me to talk? 
while you wait? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my, my okay. thought. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, fostering is something that I'm, I'm I have opened my heart to. I'm I'm very open to it now, and I'm I'm ready for it now. But it did take me a minute mm -hmm. because I was so fixated on the bio kids, and we had put so much time and energy and effort and investment. Yeah into making that happen. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for me to kind of like <laughs> let that go. And that, and I, I haven't really let that go forever, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, I, I realized it's not the bio kids that I want. I want to be a parent. Yeah. And that was, I think that was something that we both had to realize. Like, do we truly want our own children or we just want to be parents? And so we thought hard and long about that answer and, and that question. Um, and finally, I feel like we've come to a place where we're just excited to help a family, to help a child. Yeah. And we may not, we'll go more into this um, a little later, but we're not going into this necessarily saying we're going to adopt any child. Our heart's open to it if, uh, if it's ever the perfect situation or the right situation for us and the child. But that's not our intention right now. Our yeah. intention is to open up our home. We have such a nice home and so much space and it's just the two of us. And it feels so empty. And I feel like we need to fill it with children who need a safe place. Yeah, this deserves a child. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she mentioned like the process and, and how long it is. And, and so much of the process is education and learning about the system and learning about mm -hmm. the statistics. And, it's so sad. and something that they hammer in. Yeah, there's a lot of it's very sad statistics. But at the end of the day, the, the biggest stat outcomes for children that are reunified. Yes. And they're always better when children are reunified. So that was something that like being not super familiar with the system, I was thinking most people went into foster to adopt. Mm -hmm. That's not the goal. Mm -hmm. The goal is to reunify the children with their families where they'll have the best possible outcome. Yes. Obviously, that's not always the case and it's mm -hmm. circumstantial. And there's a lot, a lot of stuff to consider with this. Like, uh, again, that's, you know, another thing we spent so much time learning about is all these different circumstances. Mm -hmm. But essentially, being a resource is the most important part, being a resource to the families. Mm -hmm. We learned from uh, social workers that we've worked with throughout this process, especially here in Los Angeles, that they really push to get children back in their bio homes because of, like Cole said, the studies. The studies and the yeah. statistics show that children do better with bio family. Now that isn't to say the parents, it's just bio family, whether that's grandparents, whether that's aunt and uncles, whether that's mm -hmm. their cousins, the fact that they're still with their biological family, the kids tend to do better. Or even a godfather or something. Yeah, yeah. something that someone that the child already knows. And so having learned all of that in the classes that we took, we realized that at first, we were like, we're going into this and we want to adopt, adopt only. That's uh, We first went into it like that. And the more classes we took, we were like, no, we just want to foster, actually. This is such an important thing to do. And we just, we, we want to do that. So that is where we are. We're open to adoption, but that's not 100, it's not why we're, we're doing this. We're doing this because we want to bridge that gap between a family, support the parents. The parents, we don't know what they're going through. We have no, no. clue. And we have to be slow to judge and give those parents mm -hmm. grace. And while they're, the parents are working on whatever they're working on, we will take care of their child and, and be there for them. We want these parents to know that we're here for them as well. Not only are we taking care of their child, but we want to support them. And so it, it's going to be so hard because you have to have an open heart. You cannot go yeah. into this, into the foster care system without with bad intentions because the kids yeah. are already struggling and then it would just make it so much worse. Like we don't want to ever make it harder for these children. And the open heart is so important because these children need to feel loved. Yeah. And so that's the biggest conundrum that we're going to be up against that we're well aware of is the heartbreak that's going to come along with this. And that's been mm -hmm. all of our friends and family's chief concern is like, you know, protect your hearts too. And mm -hmm. I understand that, but I, I think I'm just accepting that, you know, we will have our heart broken. Yes. As long as we're doing something good though, that's okay. Yeah. I've had my heart broken before, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. yeah. and that it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah. So if we can do something positive for the world, yeah. you know, I, I can, I can shoulder that. Yeah. 
we just hope that whatever child is in our care when they are reunified with their parents that it is the best situation for those children that's yeah. the only thing that we hope yeah. we want these kids to go back and have the best situation possible for them so yes so we just kind of went on a tangent let's talk yeah. about the process so when the we process. started hold on before you talk I, there's a little thing on the screen is it dirty Okay, so yeah, let's talk about the process and talk about when we started it because people probably think that we started this after going through IVF when that's actually false. Yeah. We started the foster care application in September and we hadn't even transferred all of our embryos at this point. We decided yeah. that we wanted to do this, like Cole said, regardless of having bio ch children or not, we felt like it was our purpose and our heart was pulling us towards foster care. So we started the application in September. A long time ago. It takes a long time to do this and like I, I don't know if I mentioned this in a past video or not but for a while there I felt like we had a part-time job yeah with the amount of classes we had to take like three mm -hmm. four-hour classes mm -hmm. we had to do the CPR first aid training we had to go places and get fingerprints done yes. we had to get background checks done like there is so much and that's yeah. all before the interview process because yeah. in the interview process when you're assigned your resource family approval social worker and there's a million different social workers we're learning mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there's a whole interview process hours and hours and hours where they're mm -hmm. talking about all right how are you gonna parent how are you gonna discipline how were you disciplined when you were a child by your mm -hmm. parent like a million questions and invasive then, too and then preparing the house yes so much it's a lot it's a lot and so we made our final announcement that we're done with IVF, I think November or something. So when we made that announcement, because there were a lot of people saying, why don't you adopt through foster care, foster care? Like I saw a lot of foster care on that announcement. And I'm like, that is hilarious because we had already, we were well into the classes yeah. at that point. We were like, yeah. yeah, no, we guys, we like, we know there are options. We just will need to do it on our time. And um, share it on our time. Yeah, yeah. So this is something that we've been we started in September. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot because you have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. There's so much to understand about the system, mm -hmm. about the scenarios that you may be coming up against or, or coming up with. Mm -hmm. and The traumas of these children, why yeah. why they're in the system, different reason reasons why kids get placed into the system. Learning about visitations, how that goes. Mm -hmm. Man, it's just... <laughs> it's a lot. I feel like I got a, a degree and parenting yeah <laughs> parenting especially traumatized children yeah well it was great it was a parenting class like yeah we didn't have to sign up for a parenting class we wanted to learn about foster care also Seriously. and also learn how to parent at the same time so it was very informative like there are parts of the class that stressed us out we left every class exhausted so then after that like cole said we had to get our cpr certification which is why in a video we posted you saw cole doing a cpr yeah. certification <laughs> and then we just finished up our home study maybe two weeks ago. Yeah, preparing the home was a lot. It was a lot. Just to make sure, you know, it's safe mm -hmm. for us and for the children yeah. when, they, when they come. And, and there's still some little things that we got to figure out mm -hmm. with that too. So maybe let's dive into the age that we're getting licensed for. Mm. We talked a lot about this. Mm -hmm. Entering into the foster uh, process while trying to have our bio baby concurrently had us really fixated on getting a baby yeah, and fostering babies. Fostering two and three and under specifically. So the first thing we did was get the nursery going, yes. you know, because we were like, all right, we're honed in on that. Yeah. And we were honed in on that for a while through the process. For majority of the process. A lot of it. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know what moment changed it. It was probably another long emotional conversation we had. Yes, we've had a, we've uh, shed a lot of tears. Yeah, there's been a lot of tears. Like I remember sitting in I'm your. Gonna, I'm gonna start crying again. I remember sitting in the traverse and we both just like were crying. We were just in the driveway. Yeah. We would just seen a movie or something. I don't even know what we did, and we were just crying, talking about this in the middle of the day. It was um, accepting the potential of never having biological children and how that made us feel, and we just cried and talked about it, our true emotions and got to a point where we felt at peace um but it, it's been a journey like this is yeah. a lot go because we went through infertility there's a lot that we had to heal from anyway continue sorry well i was gonna say so like all these conversations require asking yourself questions mm -hmm. you know and asking yourself why this why that mm -hmm. and why are we so fixated on a baby mm -hmm. and when we thought about it we couldn't really come up with a good reason why 
And we started thinking, you know, maybe a baby would make less sense than like a child or a, sorry, a school aged child, mm -hmm. because maybe that fits more, more into our life. So like they go to school and like we can still do our work and then we can uh, do everything for them after school. And, and they're pretty independent, which is mm -hmm. a much easier for you. Yeah. And I can communicate with them, which mm -hmm. is, I think is going to be important. Mm -hmm. I can read to them. I can help them with their homework. Like, I feel like I could do a lot more mm -hmm. with that age child, which, you know, all of a sudden I feel these doors opening in my heart and yeah. it's like, okay, this makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So we decided to get our house uh, licensed for more than just babies. Yes, yeah, so technically our house is licensed for 17 and under, so we can take any child mm -hmm. um, in our home. So we have this nursery here. Again, we'll do a room tour because we have two rooms, actually. In a the, different video, right? In a different video. So we have this room here, which is three and under, so this bed right here is convertible, mm -hmm. so it can turn into a toddler bed. I tried sleeping in it. I don't, I don't fit, <laughs> unfortunately. But. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, so it turns into a toddler bed, which is great. And then we have another room that has two twin beds in it, so we can have sibling sets. A lot of these kids have siblings and so initially we were like oh I don't know if we want more than one I'm still I'm still apprehensive until we get into the process yes we don't want our first placement yeah. to be siblings um that's that's or multiples, or multiples. Way, yeah. yeah we want to start like ease our way into it mm -hmm. but we do have a room that has two uh, twin beds in there for children so and that's uh four and to 17 in that room two of them so yeah we can have technically three kids at a time I don't think we'll ever take three kids because that's a lot, but yeah. maybe it's a situation where it does make sense. It's so hard to, to really say how we feel and what we want until we actually get into it and then we yeah. have experience. Because six months from yeah. now, we're like, maybe, oh, we can do three. It's hard not to have this conversation without it being so tangential. 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 I said it. Tangential? Tan like we go without going on a lot of tangents. Because oh. each little thought opens up like another thing that we have to th think about and talk through. Because mm -hmm. I was saying like, we don't know how we feel until we feel it. Yeah, exactly. And so at, at the beginning of this process, once we're approved and licensed, I believe we're going to be sticking to emergency placements and respite placements mm -hmm. to start off. So these are like maximum 60 days. Is that right? I think it was 60 days. Yeah. Either, 30 yeah, days. either 30 or 60 days. Like we know that that's going to be the window. Mm -hmm. And so we can come in as a stopgap and, and be the emergency safety net mm -hmm. for these children and these families at the most crucial moment. Mm -hmm. But that also means that it's going to be temporary. And so we can dip our toes in, we can experience it, feel it, learn about it, yeah. take all that information with us into the next placement. Yeah, our, our worry, because we do travel a lot, we have these opportunities come up very quickly sometimes. Our worry is taking on a placement that doesn't really have like a time structure and a placement that could be in our home for a year. I don't want to ever have to be like, oh my gosh, like we have this trip coming up, we're gonna be gone for two weeks or whatever, and, and forcing this child to go to another home. I never want to do that and that would make me so sad. So taking mm -hmm. placements that are 30 to 60 days makes more sense for us because then that way if a trip does come we never have to be like oh this kid needs another home like we either will know we're gonna have a child in our care or we just say we can't take any children because we're we have a trip that came up in three weeks and we don't want to have to immediately leave the child so that's that was very important for us to be yeah. able to work with our schedule so yeah we're doing respite for families that are have long-term placements um, we can take them for a week or so while the family gets a little bit of a break. Um, and then emergency. So emergency placements is going to be interesting because we could be getting calls any time of the day. Middle of the night, we could be going to the hospital to pick up a newborn baby. Like it's the gambit of things. Gambit is a good word? Yeah. Yeah. Full Monty. Full Monty. Yeah, so a lot of emotions. This has been a very emotional uh, past half year, mm -hmm. I think, has been... Just, well, even, and no, I would include all of last year. The past year and f few months has been just an emotional roller clo coaster. Roller coaster. <laughs> roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Which is why we're so excited now. I feel like I have all these worries and tensions and, and nerves and stuff, like just chilling in this ball in the back of my head. <gasps> and um, I just want to do it. Yeah. I just want to do it. And I, I think back to when we got Sophie. And I think it was kind of similar, actually. 
because I, I had never been responsible for a dog before. Like we had had dogs in the family, but it was never my job to do all the things for the dog. And so we got Sophie and I remember asking, <laughs> asking the trainer, I was like, so like, am I going to have free time now? Or like, am I going to be able to like watch TV? And he was like, uh, yeah. What do you, what do you mean? It's a dog. <laughs> And, and I know a dog is different than a human, <laughs> yeah. of course, mm -hmm. but like, I think I'm like so scared of all of the, the parts of it, like hearing from parents who are like, oh, your life's going to be completely upended and changed. Yeah. And I, I know that that is going to be the case and I'm like prepared for that, but I want to get into it because I feel like all these worries are like creating this, you know, bigger thing in my head than it, it's really going to be. Mm -hmm. But maybe it is that too. So like I just want to get in so I just I, I want to know mm -hmm. I, I just I, I want to get rid of these question marks It's the what-ifs that are so frustrating. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's a lot. It's challenging But we wanted to talk about like the things we're excited for and the things we're nervous about Do you want to start with nervous nervous? What we're nervous and scared yeah. about? Okay, let's start with yeah. that. Yeah, so I'll start okay. with what I'm I am what are you nervous, nervous I know that this is going to be a lot besides the attachment to these children and whatnot. It's going to be a lot because we are being these children, par their parents, you know, temporarily. So we do have to take them to doctor's appointments. We have to set up this for them. We have to set up that for them. We have to maybe get an IEP for school. There's a lot of things that I've never done before that is going to be a steep, it's going to be a steep learning curve for us. Thankfully, the social worker that did our home study is so incredible. And she's like, anytime you have any questions, yeah. please, please, please call me. And it's so nice to know that we have her that we can, you know, go to. Yeah. But I'm nervous about all of the things that we don't know how to do as parents and just being thrown into it. Like getting a seven-year-old randomly. We're like, oh, here you go. And I'm like, what? Yeah, and they're asking like, how are you going to discipline the child? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We did at the end have to have an idea of how we're going to discipline. Like, right. it was important to talk about that and have a plan. But I think that's my biggest, sh like, one, one of my biggest stresses. Maybe you can say yours. I think my, my stresses change depending on their age. Mm. So if we get a newborn, my biggest stress is, like, not being able to do enough. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's going to be on you because for a newborn, like, that's that's a lot of hands on. Mm -hmm. Um, but if it's an older child, I have less of those worries and more worries around like the administrative side of things mm -hmm. Because with my ADHD like I already struggle with my own life I'm staying on top of my appointments and scheduling this and mm -hmm. following up on that and paying this bill like already like I'm you know working on that and so to introduce a child with their whole world which is already happening and having to get in there and like just pick it up and keep running with it mm -hmm. um, I'm worried yeah, I think you'll be okay. I think so too. I know it's a big worry of yours, but I think you're, you do a good job now of learning the best ways for you to remember things. Um, and it's a teamwork. We're going to be doing this together. We're both parenting this child. It's not me mm -hmm. nor you. We're, it's a collaborative effort. So I think that Ma, I'm better in this area. You're better in this area. And then with our both of our skills and our you know positives, we come together and we'll have we have one amazing person. So yeah. I think we'll be okay with that. I get your worry, but I think give yourself a more credit. I think you'll do great. And we have a lot of tools too that we have the boppy that we're cool can mm -hmm. hold an infant and a newborn. He did that with his niece. Great I job. Could feed, you know. Cole could feed. We got um, a chair that kind of reclines just a tad bit so that Cole could mm -hmm. actually feed. We have a formula maker that Cole can operate so he can make bottles. So there's a lot of things that we got that were more expensive, but it meant Cole had the freedom to help more. Like these chairs, for example, this is something oh. we got so that I could like be on the ground with a baby during tummy time or hanging out in the playpen with a toddler when they're playing games or something. Yeah. That might be a sitting target, but we'll yeah. see. <laughs> I mean, it'll be a lot of effort to get you on the ground. It may make more sense to just stay in your chair, but... And we'll learn that too. Another yeah. question mark that we just got to figure out by doing it. Yeah. Another thing I'm worried about is well, this is one of the concerns that our social worker that did our home study had, but it's the fact that the social workers assigning cases to us may never call us for children under three because of Cole's disability. And so they may discriminate us because their view on Cole's ability to parent which is the most infuriating and frustrating thing. It's just very frustrating that people automatically see our application and it says quadriplegic and they're like, ah, 
you know, kids shouldn't go there. So she was very concerned about that. And she said, if we ever feel like our social worker is discriminating against us and not giving us any calls for two and under or three and under, immediately go to her supervisor, their supervisor and report them and report what's happening. If we feel like it's continuing, go above the supervisor and just keep climbing the ladder until we have fair rights. Um, it just worries me that that may be the case. And I, I just hope it's not. Yeah, but hey, Good thing we have a lot of experience with dealing with discriminatory people. Mm -hmm. As disabled people, we gotta be advocates for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we will speak up. We will speak up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she was so concerned. I was like, oh, I appreciate your concern. I will say we're really good at advocating for ourselves and noticing when these things are happening. So we will not hesitate to express that to anyone and say, hey, no. this is not right. What, I dare you to discriminate is, against me. Where is it, the section what? Do you remember it? Oh, section five. C? Um, section 5, sub-article, I think it's just A, 5A or something. Yeah, we know. We need to refine anyway, it. We yeah. know exactly where in the handbook yeah. that is massive. She printed it out for us specifically so she can highlight this area. So anytime we felt mm -hmm. discriminated against based on Cole's disability, we can say this is not allowed based on this part of this document. So you cannot do this. So yeah. that's my concern. Do you have another one? This is a very long video, but there's yeah. a lot to be said here. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Another concern, I think a general just like parent concern, just how it's going to affect our lives and stuff mm -hmm. and impact our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, also impact our hearts. Mm -hmm. That's one of my biggest concerns too is mm -hmm. the heartbreak, you know? Yeah. That's that's a real concern for from you all, for for us, it's yeah. for any resource parent, that's a concern. Yeah, we're, re we're just as concerned and we are fully aware that this is going to be difficult, but yeah. We've heard from so many, like I've talked to so many people who are foster care parents and they always say it's the best and hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Just like parenting. Yes, <laughs> just like parenting. Um, it's just a different kind of, it's just different. It's just different. It's just different. So what are you most excited about? I am very excited just to have children in the home to you know give a child the love that they deserve to show a child what love is and say you know you are worthy of this treatment you're worthy of having a parent who loves and cares for you mm -hmm. um to give them a safe space um i'm just really excited to be able to do that for a child i want to make a difference in the child's life and i have I love kids. I love kids. My Christmas entire kids. life, I wanted to work with kids. I just, I feel like I'm a child whisperer. Um, mm -hmm. And so I love kids. Um, and so this like really opens my heart. And it makes me feel like I finally have a purpose in something. I feel for, I felt like for a long time, I felt like I lost my purpose. I didn't know what I was meant to do in this world because the one thing I wanted was to be a mom. And it's like, I wasn't getting that. And so this, it makes me feel like, I'm finally at peace with everything and I'm just excited to just love a child, to give them what they haven't been getting in their life and, and to, to support them while their parents are working on themselves. Yeah, what about you? That's great, that's beautiful. <laughs> Those children are lucky. They're gonna be lucky to have you. I'm very excited to get rid of all these question marks. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's what I'm most excited about mm -hmm. and and just feel it. I just want to feel it so much mm -hmm. I, I want to feel because I have all these ideas in my head mm -hmm. But it's gonna be so different. I'm sure and I just want to feel that I'm very excited and to all of your points I, I agree like I want I want a child to be in a place where they feel safe where they feel like they don't have to stress about a million things They don't have to worry about what might be going on with mom and dad. Mm -hmm. I just want them to be comfortable and, and feel the love, like yeah. you said. I do think that Charisma and I have a very unique perspective. Well, it's not that unique. Like I'm sure a lot of disabled people and their partners and families would relate to this, but like we see the world in a different way because of what we've been through. Mm -hmm. Together, individually, I think we have a lot of wisdom to pass on. I know, I mean, I, I don't want to like sound arrogant or anything, but like I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot and I think I could help, like I, I could be there for someone who's going through a lot, especially a child. Yeah, you've been through a lot of trauma and you've learned how to deal with trauma. And you were a kid, you, yes, you were 16, you weren't a child, but you were a young kid who went through trauma at such a young age. And so you do have that perspective that I don't have, which I'm very thankful for because in a situation where you notice this kid is just dealing with trauma, you have the ability to talk to them, to be there for them and to help me be there for them as well, which is great. 
I'm going to be the trauma coach, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm happy to be. I'll, yeah. I will take that role. Yeah. I'm happy to. We're excited. It's a lot. It's stressful. It's, it's scary. It's exciting. We have so many emotions every day. Every day. And the closer and closer we get to getting our license, the more like, oh, it gets a little... It's feeling very real. It's feeling very, very real. Very real now. For a while, it was just like theoretical taking classes about some future thing. Now mm -hmm. it's like any day now. We could be starting to receive calls. Any day, yeah. So so if, uh, if you all would be understanding and bear with us, because, you know, during our first placement, we may just come to a screeching halt and just focus on that child mm -hmm. and get into the groove before uh, we get back to work because that's the child's number one. Yeah. Number one priority. Yeah. So just, yeah, we want y'all to understand yeah. where, we're, where we are and what's going on. Bear with us. Yeah. Um, and then also we want to do a Q&A. So we just kind of said a bunch of stuff. But if you have specific questions, especially after we get in placement. Oh, I'm sure they have questions. That you want us to answer, let us know. Drop any questions below. If you are a foster parent, a resource parent, let us know like any advice you have as specifically a resource parent or as a parent mm -hmm. in general. But specifically a resource parent, it, it would be nice to hear from yeah. your perspective. And, and Especially if you're in L.A. Especially if you're in L.A. County because L.A. County has 30,000. Well over 30,000. No, not well over. Now it's 30,000. Oh, it's, not, it's 30? Yeah. During the, they said like 36 at one point. During the pandemic, it was 33,000. Oh. 33, yeah. Way too many kids. No, it's way, it's still not okay. Yeah, 30,000 children in the system. So yeah, if you have specifically experience in LA County, mm -hmm. please comment because we just, we would, or reach out, email us, um, whatever. One thing I'll, I'll add before we wrap up mm -hmm. is that Charisma and I have a lot of agency as resource parents. Yes. In the sense that like we have, and because we've had a lot, another long emotional discussion about this, mm -hmm. A list of questions that oh. we are going to ask a social worker who gives us a call about a placement. Yes. And depend, like we're we're very particular about those questions. Mm -hmm. Where's the child? What's the visitation? What are they going to be like? What's the situation? Like what had what has the child been through? We have all of these things mm -hmm. or all these questions, so we know exactly if we are going to be able to meet that child's needs yes. or not. And yeah. if we're not, from those questions then we're not going to take the child. Yeah. We have a lot of agency. We're not going to ever be put in a position where we're... We can't handle it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the child's always the number one priority. So they're not, they're never going to give a child to a parent or a resource parent who can't handle it. And if a resource parent thinks they can and then realizes they can't, we're going to move that child to somewhere where their needs will be met because yeah. the child's needs are number one priority. But the goal is to get that child into a home where they will stay there until yes. they're reunited with their family. We don't want these kids Movement bouncing to home, from home to home. That's not good. Right. So if we feel like we're not sure if we can handle this placement or we're not sure that we can provide this child with the need, something that they need, with the type of parent that they need, then we're just going to say, you know, sorry, but we can't be a resource for this child right now. And there's no shame in that. And our social worker emphasized that so much. All of them, all, all of, of them. them said it's okay to say no. Do not feel the pressure that you have to say yes because it's better to say no than to bring a child to your home and it's complete chaos for you and the child. Yeah. Um, so you have to think that's about the, last the thing child. It's the last thing you want. So you, it's it's looking within yourself. We have to look within ourselves with every single call. Is this something that we can do? Is this mm -hmm. a child that we can truly care and love while they're in in this in the system that's something I, I take a lot of comfort in with this yeah. whole process mm -hmm. is that we're never going to be forced to do anything that we don't want to do mm -hmm. and we have a lot of agency mm -hmm. to make decisions for ourselves yeah so take comfort th in that with us yeah yes. yeah thank you for watching this very 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 long video i'm yeah. sorry it's so long but there is so much to talk about and so important but again if you have any questions leave them below if you have any advice because you are a resource slash foster parent also leave them below Thank you all for watching. Thank you for sticking with us and understanding. And yeah. I hope you come along on this journey with us because mm -hmm. we're going to have a lot of new stuff to share. This is yeah. going to be a whole new experience for us, obviously. So, yeah. And we're never going to share the names no. of the kids, show no. their faces They're ever. They're not going to be in our... Like, you might know, like, we, you could see us pull, pushing a stroller or something, but we're not going to yeah. show these kids. We're protecting yeah. these kids. It's so, so, so important. You might see their back in the distance. Yeah, but... Know. 
it's never gonna be it's gonna be our experience Cole's experience the process without showing the kids I think that we can show that without showing the kids and I think that's so important yeah. plus we literally can't too so yeah <laughs> I don't want to morally or legally yes yeah. okay <laughs> all right don't forget to like comment subscribe and, and stay, stay positive. positive and stay parenting <laughs> bye all right. peace